Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the RDA. I am back with another analysis video considering you guys love the Greenwood one so much. I'm here to just make a bit more and highlight some of the key issues or some key areas that a lot of people have noticed and talked about <clears throat> and try to give my opinion and then also back up with some stats later on in the video. So if you're new here, please do like, consider subscribing, share with a friend if you enjoyed it. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Today, as you can tell by the title, I'm just going to be discussing our fullbacks and how things have changed recently with Dallow and Tellez versus Aaron Wabasaka and Luke Shaw. I think a big thing that a lot of us have noticed right away is that Dallow and Tellez are an extreme liability defensively. I think Dallow was main fault for the goal that we conceded against Villarreal. And I felt he was way too easy to get past throughout the entire game. And Dan Juma just had his number read. And I can say the opposites for Jeremy Pino, I believe his name is, <clears throat> uh, on Alex Teller's side. And I just think that both these fullbacks are really good offensively, but they haven't quite showed the offensive prowess that their potential is shown, especially when they had their full start now against Villarreal. So as much as Alex Tellez did score his scream over goal, which credit to him, he's not going to hit that all that often. It's one of those goals that are going to go down in like a Champions League history, you know, one of those in the gold compilation every few years. Someone's going to put that in there and we'll, we're going to remember that goal for a while. But I don't think he contributed enough going forward. And I think I could say the same about Dallo. And there's this quote here on my phone that I'm just going to read off of um, that Dallo said after the United game. And he said, we wanted to give width with the wingers, with fullbacks inside to stop counterattacks and build a little more from the inside. We tried different ways to break up the lines and fill the pockets inside the Villarreal midfield and defense. But I think there's this glaring issue here. And we'll get onto that a bit more specifically when I switch over to the heat maps that I've got for you. But I just don't think we actually did enough going forward to actually break up the Villa play in the midfield nor the defense. So without further ado, I think let's just switch over. Let's go take a look. And my beautiful face is going to disappear. So sorry to the five of you who enjoy that. But let's go over to that. Um, so yeah, here we go. Beautiful. So here we go. We've got some heat maps from Luke Shaw, Aaron Romasaka, Alex Tellers, and Diogo Dodo, as you can see here. So... The two on the right are Tellers versus Tellers and Delo when they played with each other. And a big thing that I think we can notice right away, we're attacking left to right. Um, Tellers got far more advanced. That That's clear as day. That, that's the opposition's box over this point here. Let me try and move this here. Uh, over this point around here, you can tell that that's where he kind of shone just towards their corner flag on the right-hand side there. He, he had a lot more touches there than Dello, as you can see by the heat map on Dello's side. It's not nearly as much. You could definitely see the idea of them wanting to cut inside with these little yellows coming out of the red that go more in line into the circle, to the center of the park. And you can kind of see that they tried it. I just don't think it worked at all. I don't think we disrupted their play enough. I personally just think... But looking at this game here, you can see very much how Alex Tellers was non-existent defensively and didn't supply enough going forward. I know he scored his goal, but we'll scroll down here and we'll go look and see that he put in two key passes, eight crosses, two of them were accurate, three long balls, two of them are accurate. So <clears throat> it's a failure of our system. I think that's a great way to put it. It's a failure of our system again and again and again. If we're crossing a whole eight times and only two of them are actually reaching their mark at all, we're doing something wrong. We're, we're just crossing for the fun of crossing. And I'm guessing those two key passes that he has here, if I could just highlight that. No, it's been difficult, sorry. Um, but yeah, those two key passes there, I'm assuming are those two crosses that he actually managed to get on target at all. And I think the Cavani chance is a great example of this, where he actually got a really good chance to put something away, and he didn't. And then, of course, he has one shot on target, he's got his goal. Fair enough. We walk away with that. But 
I, I just don't think our fullbacks offered enough, the, especially not the versatility that we used to with Aaron Bissaka and Luke Shaw. And I think it's a great way to just pivot over to their previous performances here. And here, it's the opposite way around. We're attacking from right to left, as you can see by this arrow above there, just underneath the name. And we can see where they took a lot of touches. So Luke Shaw, I've been saying all season long, has been a bit non-existent defensively. He's been way too far forward personally. And I think that's very clear to see here with very little touches coming on this right-hand side, which is our box defensively. And you can see a lot of them are in the midfield. And then quite a bit, not as much, is on the outside of the area here where he would normally whip in crosses. And of course, he's got his corner flags because he's on all the corners. <clears throat> and then we look at Aaron Basaka, who is a lot more reserved in a way. He is primarily behind the midfield line. He is act actively trying to break up the midfield and help a little bit. But I do think... We didn't try nearly as much going as deep as you can see by these heat maps not really cutting the side as much. We can see that he hasn't really cut in all that much, but it's still giving us enough width to play off of him and him to actually do something. If we look here, Aaron Osaka obviously with his duels, he's winning most majority of them all the time. And then he put in two crosses, none of them hit the mark. It's just there's an issue with our system, and right now with his new experimentation. I just don't feel like we're getting enough value out of everyone right now. So, same thing with Dallow on this right-hand side. Three crosses, zero accurate. Two crosses, zero accurate. Same pass accuracy going forward. Um, Aaron Bissaka had more touches in general. Aaron Bissaka had more dribbles as well versus Dallow. So, <sighs> yeah, let me actually do this to make it a little bit easier to read. Um, but, yeah, I think... When we're playing against a very strong team offensively that has pacey wingers, it is best to use someone like Aaron Wasaka because he is one of the best defensive fullbacks in world football right now, as you can see by just his issues there. Oop, one second. There we go, issue resolved. Um, sorry about that. But yeah, uh, it's just a case of Aaron Wasaka is doing the same offensively as Dallow right now. And he's winning significantly more duels. He's winning his tackles. Um, they're about they're very even when you look at these stats comparatively. Baron's getting onto more of the ball. He's not trying to just spray the ball like Dallow in a way. So I personally think that Aaron Wasaka is obviously better. I think Dallow deserves his chances, of course. I think Tedes deserves his chances as well. And they're both fantastic players. And just looking at all of these shots just highlighted here is really good. Pettis is obviously a really good player. With Luke Shaw in mind, though, it's a very difficult thing to look at. And again, defensive liability. Dribble passed four times. Dribble passed two times. Dribble passed zero times. Dribble passed one time. Defensively is where they lack. And offensively, I think they do go man for man together. So, in short, I do think this experimentation with trying to keep them on the inside a little bit more is not the greatest of ideas. I don't think it's helped all that much going forward. And I, I just think that this is going to create a bit more confusion and it's going to put a lot more pressure on players like Aaron Wasak and Luke Shaw to do even more than what they're doing for this team. Which is a lot. We all know that they do a lot for this team. Luke Shaw is arguably one of the best fullbacks in world football last season. Aaron Wan Bissaka, one of the, there's an argument for best right back, and I think a lot of United players, United fans would say so, because he's just fantastic defensively and he offers enough going forward. So I, I think, once again, this is all opinion based, and we're going to just look at the stats just to kind of guide our viewpoints here. They're very even. They're, there's not much to differentiate between the two of them and we're obviously just looking at two games but a massive sample size but it's just a general view of what these players offer and i personally want to see our main two keep on going and i'm very worried defensively when we are playing a dallo and a tellers they leave a lot of space they get draw past very easily and it puts a lot of pressure on de gea and Varane going forward 
which is not ideal. It just means we're going to be conceding more chances as long as Luke Shaw is out and with Aaron Wissaka and his two-match ban in the Champions League. It's going to be a very frustrating situation for all parties. And right now, I just think we need to just stick with what we know. We don't need to experiment with this cutting inside because it's a bit much. And Scott should Scott and Fred should be able to handle the midfield if Oli was good enough, you know? And that's kind of the thing. We, we, we're playing with a lot of inside forwards, so our wing back should be overlapping and create that width. And with those uh, heat maps, that's the word. With those heat maps, you saw that Delo wasn't really overlapping that much. Taylor's was doing a bit of it, but it's just not working right now. And, well, not working is putting a bad time. I, I think it's not at its best. That's probably the best way to put it. It's not at its best, and I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I don't mind the experimentation that Ali did. We tried to get Dalla to play a bit more inward and Taylor to play a bit more inward. But it wasn't really that impactful at the same time. So I think, leave the idea. It was a nice attempt. But our fullbacks are fine as it is. We don't need to change that all that much. But let's see what happens moving forward. Maybe I'm proven wrong, and Aaron Wasak is just stellar when he's coming inside to help McTominay or Fred or whoever's playing that pivot role. And yeah, we'll see what happens going forward. But that's just a small little overview. Hope you guys enjoyed. And do leave a like if you did. Share with a friend. Consider subscribing. All that great stuff. And hope you guys continue to have a good day. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And let's have a bit of a discussion about this. Let me know what you think. Enjoy the rest of your day once more. Bye.